I felt the Lord would have us to continue with this text, Proverbs chapter 25, in verse 2. There's some things that the Lord would like us to learn, things he'd like us to see and understand about seeking him. We'll be right back after this message. Are you ready? Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us, Lord, guidance, direction, and leading us by your Spirit to teach us these things, to reveal these things to us, that you would give us understanding of the deep things of God. We pray, Lord, that you anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. First Chronicles 29 and verse 10. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. David knew how to worship God. Amen. David knew how to worship God. Do we? Do we really know how to worship God? Have you ever thought about the fact that where did David get these words? David didn't read these words in a book somewhere. Amen. Where did David get these words? Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory 
and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. David didn't just think these words up, folks. This is not off the cuff. So where did David get this knowledge. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. David was a king. Amen? But not just a king. He was God's king. Are you listening, folks? How did David know how to worship God? How did David know how to lead Israel to worship God? David searched. He sought God. Are you listening, folks? David was a man after God's own heart. David was after God's heart. The scripture says, David said these words. David said these words, folks. Even as a deer panteth after the water brook, so my soul panteth after thee, O God. David said those words, folks. He said, my soul thirsteth for God. Even as in a dry land, my soul thirsteth for God. Do you see how hungry, how thirsty? Do you see how David was longing to know God? It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Folks, it's in searching God. It is in searching him out. It is in getting to know him that there is honor in riches. Honor in riches are in the presence of God. Are you listening? You cannot help but experience the honor and the riches of God when you walk in his presence. Are you listening? When you're clothed with the power of God, when you walk in the presence of God, you will experience honor. You will experience riches to the measure that you walk in his presence. To the degree that you walk in his presence will you experience these things. To the measure, to the degree that you walk in the presence of God, will you experience the wisdom of God, knowing the wisdom of God? All these things are in the glory of God, and they can be found if you will search. If you will seek, the scripture says that if we're going to please God, that we must seek him diligently, that he's a rewarder 
to them that diligently seek him. But do we seek God like David? My heart panteth after thee as a deer panteth after the water brooks. As in a dry and a thirsty land where no water is, I'm thirsty for God. I'm hungry for God to see thy power in the land of the living, David said. David longed for the glory of God, folks. Are you listening? He longed to see the glory of God in the land of the living. That's been the longing of my soul for years now, to see the glory of God in the land of the living. Amen. To see God's glory, to see God work. Amen. We've seen the counterfeit. We've seen the false gospel. We've seen the deceivers. Amen. We've seen the, all the fraud out there. But we've yet to see the glory of God. And I believe that that glory is coming. Amen. I believe we're on the verge of the glory of God. Hallelujah. All creation is groaning, travailing for that which shall be revealed in the last time, the unveiling of the sons of God. And where do these sons come from? Where do these kings abide? But in the glory of God. Are you listening? You see, God is concealing his sons in his glory. God is concealing his kings in his glory at this time. There's coming a time when God's going to reveal his sons. The world is going to see his sons. The world is going to see the kings of the Lord those that will reign with the Lord in this earth. Even as Jesus walked upon the earth, so his son shall walk. Amen. There will be a demonstration of the power and the glory of God in this time. One more time, God is about to move, folks. One more time, God is going to move. Mercy always precedes judgment. Did you know that? Years ago, the Lord gave to this brother, he gave to this preacher, to this minister, I saw a vision. Listen to me. That's when I was a young man. Now I see dreams. But listen, when I was young, I saw a vision and I saw like a wave going through the sanctuary where the church at the Bible school where I would worship God. And in this vision, I saw this wave and I began to hear an angelic host singing a song, another wave of glory. Brothers and sisters, I believe we're at the time when that glory wave is coming. Hallelujah. God is going to move by his mighty power in the days ahead. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters, there's coming a sweeping of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you ready? What I noticed in this vision is there were those that were not paying attention. There were those that didn't even recognize the glory of God was even present. Like Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. But then I saw those that were at the back of the church standing up. 
I saw those that were at the front of the church kneeling down at the altar. I saw God's people in all different places. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? And as that wave began to move through the sanctuary, God made me to understand when this last wave of glory comes, he said there's going to be some in the body of Christ uh, that are going to be instantly changed. Are you listening to this preacher now? Amen. There's coming such a move of God. Uh, Hallelujah. There's going to be those that are going to run from the presence of God. And there are going to be those that are going to run to the presence of God. And there are going to be those that are going to be changed in the presence of God. A sudden blissful change. It's not just going to be a few in the sense that just one or two or three or four. No, there's going to be a remnant. God has a remnant within the church of overcomers, amen, that are not asleep, but they're awake and they're watching, hallelujah. Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. And I believe when this wave of glory takes place, there are going to be some that are going to be changed instantly. Even as God spoke to Abram and said, walk thou before me and be perfect. Abram was changed into Abraham. God is going to change those that are ready. Those that are awake. Those that are watching. Those that are ready. Not everyone's awake. Not everyone's anticipating with great anticipation. Not everyone is looking up. Not everyone is looking up. Not everyone is looking for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ when he shall appear. Are you listening? Suddenly he's going to come to his temple. Are you ready? He's going to come, folks. He's not coming to the world. He's coming to his temple. Suddenly he's coming. Are you listening? And he's going to take some to be his own. He's going to make some jewels. Are you listening? His treasure. He's going to take some out of the church in that time. Will you be one that the Lord takes? Enoch walked with God. He was not for God took him. The Lord says they shall be mine when I make up my jewels. Are you listening? They that fear the Lord spoke often of him. They fear the Lord. God wrote it down. He recorded what they had said in secret. Those things that they said. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. There is a place in the Lord of great fellowship in the presence of God, in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. There's a place in God of great fellowship in the presence of the Lord. Jesus said, where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. Amen? I believe with all my heart that this is the time to be in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. There's no place safe except under the wing. Of the Almighty God. Amen. Under the wings of the Almighty. Do you remember Jesus? He wept over Jerusalem. He wept over them. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. How many times I would have gathered you. Under my wings. He said, but you would not. Amen. But to the Gentiles, the Lord is saying the same thing. Gather yourself under my wings. 
Amen. Will you be like will you be like the Jews? Will you be like Judah? Or do you love his appearing? Do you love his appearing, folks? I'm going to say it again. Jacob said the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. It wasn't until Jacob woke up and the next morning he realized God was in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. If God has to speak to us in visions and dreams, brothers and sisters, he will. But I'm tell you right now, the Lord would rather speak to you and I plainly face to face as a man to a man, like he spoke to Abraham. God will speak to us if we won't wake up. Amen. But God will speak to us face to face. If we will awake fully. The Lord would rather speak to you and I plainly face to face than speak to us in dreams and visions. Amen. Hallelujah. Face to face. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Face to face. As a man speaks to a man, Abraham was a friend of God. He spoke to God face to face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. That's the presence of God. Did you know that? The Lord is veiled by his glory. The face of God is glory. His glory veils his face. But if you and I will seek his face, we've got to enter into his glory. And there are riches and honor in the glory of the Lord in his presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Years ago, when the Lord first called me, he said, seek my glory, my son, not your own. Seek my glory, my son, not your own. Years ago. Took me years to even understand what he was saying. Brothers and sisters, are we seeking his glory? Or are we seeking our own? Are we seeking to be seen of men and heard of men? Or are we seeking his glory? To see him glorify himself. Hallelujah. Jesus said the works that I do. He said they're not my works. Jesus didn't come to seek his own glory. It was the works of the Father. Jesus let the Father glorify himself through Jesus. Will you? Will you let God glorify himself through your life? That's what it's all about, folks. Allowing God to glorify himself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus did nothing of himself. And he's going to have many sons like his own son. I can of my own self do nothing. That's why the Lord has to remove any mixture. There cannot be any mixture. Hallelujah. We must become so transparent that those around us do not see us, but they only see the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Amen. To see the glory of God, hallelujah. 
will change your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. We have got to see His glory. We are changed from glory to glory as we behold the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. We are changed into the same image. We've got to see him face to face. We've got to seek his face, brothers and sisters. Seek him while he may be found of you. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Now is the time to seek his face evermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you hear, David? My heart panteth after thee, as a deer pants after the water brook. There's a lot of folks that are afraid around us, and maybe even us, we may get afraid at times because we're living in perilous times. Why is the deer panting? Because it's being chased by a hunter. How many know we're being hunted down in this world? The hunters are out, amen, and they're hunting down and they're killing. David said, just like that deer pants after the water brooks when it's afraid. I'm going to pant after God. Hallelujah. And as that deer drinks that water, so must we drink that living water. That refreshing living water. Hallelujah. There is a river. David said that. God revealed to David. There is a river. Make glad the city of God. There is a river. The river of life. Amen. Are you thirsty? Amen. When's the last time you drank from that river? That river that shall never run dry. Amen. You drink of the water of this world and you'll thirst again. But if you drink of that water, if you drink of that river, you'll never thirst again. You'll never thirst again. The problem is that God's people never get enough of a drink. Amen. We need to learn how to drink deep. We need to learn how to drink deep, folks. The greater the thirst, the greater the infilling. You can never exhaust God's supply. Don't ever think that you could ever outthirst what God has for us. Amen? Think about what the thirst and the hunger needs to be to receive all the fullness of God. Amen? Can God help us to get thirsty? That's what the law is for. God gave us the law, even as a, a rancher gives a salt block to its cattle to make them thirsty. You've heard the old adage that you can't force a horse to water. You can't make them drink. You can lead them to the water. But you can't make them drink. But man will take a block of salt to get that horse to become thirsty. And God has given his people a block of salt called the law. A 
Amen. But God's people don't love the law. You need to learn to love the law. You need to learn to eat the law, receive the law. Amen. We need the law of God to make us thirsty for that living water. Hallelujah. When Jesus came to the earth, those that were around him, they knew the law. They were thirsty. There were many of those that kept the law. And those are the ones that were thirsty. But the hypocrites like the Pharisees, they talked about the law and they even taught the law, but they didn't live it. They didn't keep the law. So they weren't ready for Jesus. But if you really love the word, if you really love the law of God, you will be salted. God told you and I, we're to be the salt of the earth. Amen. We're supposed to be sharing the salt to make folks thirsty for the living water. Amen. I see that there are those in the land that God is using to salt the folks. But I see those, amen, that are going to share the living water with those that are thirsty. Hallelujah. I don't hear the bride in the spirit saying, come and I'll give you salt. I hear the spirit and the bride saying, come all ye that are athirst and I will give you living water. I'll give you to drink. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are ministers in the land that know how to salt and know how to give the living water. Amen. They know how to be a shepherd. They know how to give the salt of the word of the law of God, but they know how to give the living water to those that are thirsty. Then you have ministers in the land. All they know how to do is give salt, and they never give living water to those that are thirsty. But then you have ministers that don't even give the salt, and they don't give living water. Amen. Thank God for the law of God. Thank God for the grace of God that has now appeared to you and I, brothers and sisters. The Old Testament is the law. The New Testament is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth is come by Jesus Christ. Amen. We try to salt and give living water in every message. Amen. We try to share something from the Old Testament and the New Testament. We try to give you that balance. Amen. So that you'll thirst for Jesus. Amen. That's what it's all about. It's all about thirsting for that living water. Hallelujah. That you will never, ever thirst again. You'll never thirst for the world again if you keep drinking of that living water. Doesn't mean you're not going to thirst again for more living water, but you won't thirst for the world if you're drinking of that living water. You can't drink from two fountains at the same time. You got to make up your mind. Hallelujah. You got to make up your mind which fountain you're going to drink from. If you drink from the fountain of this world, you will not be thirsty for the living water. And if you drink of the living water, you will not be thirsty for the world's water. I even saw recently where they're now calling a bottle of water. They're calling it living water. I couldn't believe it. A bottle of 
purified water they're calling living water. Aren't you glad that we understand that there is a river? There is living water. The Spirit of God. Living water. You drink of this water and you'll live forever. The world doesn't know anything about it. Hallelujah. Let me say this to you. If you got a little bit of a drink and it's changed your life, could you imagine what would happen if you got more? Amen. If you got saved when you drank just a little of that living water, what would happen if you drank more of that living water? Hallelujah. There's more, brothers and sisters. There's more. I will drink. I will drink from the fountain. From the fountain. From the fountain. I will drink. I will drink from the fountain. From the fountain of God's great love. I will drink. I will drink from the fountain. From the fountain. From the fountain. I will drink. I will drink from the fountain. From the fountain of God's great love. Just as the horse that is led to the water cannot be forced to drink that water, so Brother Joseph cannot force you to drink. Amen? You cannot be forced to seek God. Did you know that? You cannot be forced to seek God, for, to thirst after God. Nobody can manipulate you or control you to get you to seek God or to get you to thirst and hunger for God. That is your choice. That is your choice. You're going to make that choice if you're going to hunger and thirst for God. But do you hear David's thirst? Do you hear him? Hallelujah. As a deer panteth after the water brook. So panteth my soul after thee for the living God. Amen. David had a heart after God. I'm thirsty for God. As in a dry land where no water is. Can you imagine being thirsty? And there's no water to drink. That's how David felt. When he was separated from God. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Are you thirsty? Are you yet thirsty? The more separation there is between you and God. The more thirsty you're going to be. God in his mercy will allow that salt to come to salt you. But it's up to you if you're going to drink. Amen. Do you hear David crying out? Purge me with hyssop. Create within me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. 
David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I'm thirsty. Amen. There's no reason why God's people need to be thirsty. Is there a lack in your life? Then there's separation between you and the living water. Amen. Oh, I feel his presence. How much distance is there between you and the living water? Did you drink from that living water today? Hallelujah. Nothing can satisfy your soul like the living water. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. If you lack It's not because God is not willing. It's not because God doesn't have to give. It's because sin has separated you from God. Amen. Sin has separated you from God. How many know anything that's not of faith is sin? Amen. That's why if you're going to please God, you got to seek him diligently. Amen. God has everything we need, brothers and sisters, but we've got to seek him for it. Everything we have need of is concealed in his glory. It's all there. Everything we have need of is there. Even honor. Riches. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Are you listening? At his right hand, pleasures forevermore. It's all in him. All you have need of. But if you're still drinking from the water of this world, do you still think that the bread on this earth is enough? You'll never, you'll never seek him. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Did you hear every word that came from the mouth of God today? Did you let any of those words slip? How attentive are you? How diligent are you that you today have heard every word that has proceeded out of the mouth of God? Hallelujah. Oh, but we know what's going on in the news. Amen. Oh, yeah, we know what's going on concerning the coronavirus. But have we heard every word that has proceeded out of the mouth of God this day? Hallelujah. Do you really love him? Do you really love God, friend? Every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's how we are to live. That's the living water we are to drink. Every word. 
We live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, will you also go away? And Peter said, where are we going to go? Thou only has the words of eternal life. Only you have the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go? It's a good question. That's a good question. Where are you going to go? Amen. Where are you going to go, friend? Where are you going to go from the presence of the Lord? Where art thou, Adam? Where art thou? Where are you going to go, Jonah? Where are you going to go from the presence of the Lord, Elijah? Where are you going? Have you thought about it? Where are you going? The Lord says, turn around. Repent. Turn around. Amen? Hallelujah. I recently just watched a testimony, and I'm closing with this, last night. How this, I'm not even going to say his name, but over there in Nigeria, he was one of the rebel warlords. Cannibalism, human sacrifice unto Satan. Believe they got power from that. Killed 20,000 or more people. After sacrificing a child, right in the very moment after sacrificing a child, he sent his men to go, which he called boys. He sent his boys to go get some water to wash him off, to wash the blood off. He said, while they were gone, he said, I heard a voice behind me. He said he turned around, but he couldn't look because the light was so bright. He said it was brighter than the sun. He could only look down at his feet. He calls it to this day a theophany. He said that light was so bright, he was terrified. And the voice said to him, why are you slaving? He didn't understand what the voice meant. Why are you slaving? He says, you sit as a king, but you're slaving. Listen to me, people. He didn't really understand what the voice was saying to him. And finally, that voice said to him, repent and live or refuse and die. And the light vanished. Are you listening? He went on to become a fearless warrior for Jesus. Persecuted by the very ones that he maimed and killed. The families of those that were maimed and killed. Hated. Rejected. In my opinion, with a greater testimony than Saul. Why? Because to whom much is forgiven, loveth much. Are you listening? 
He saw the glory of God. His testimony has gone out all over this world. Are you listening? He's been blessed. Every time he walks into the mission, the people begin singing and glorifying God and honoring their leader that once was a rebel, that once was a Satan worshiper that said himself in his own testimony that he spoke face to face with the devil. He said, I did those things because I was demon-possessed. Are you listening, folks? But now he's possessed by God. And he has a testimony that proves it. And those in Africa say a lot of these rebels will become fake ministers and reinvent themselves especially at the end of a civil war. And that's when it happened. That's when he was converted. So many questioned him. But many years later, and he's still serving God. You can see the smile on his face. I'm going to tell you, folks, Only the love of God can save a wretch. Are you listening? That man was a wretch. He was wretched. He said, I still have to battle with the nightmares of what I have done. Are you listening, people? Satan torments this man with his past. What does he do? He has to overcome. He has to fight the good fight of faith. I don't know what you've done, friend. But with God, there is forgiveness. I was asking the Lord about this man's testimony. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, I'm no respecter of persons. Amen. Murdered and maimed. They said that they would cut off a person's head and kick it around like a soccer ball. His soldiers would go out in women's clothes with machetes. They were drunk and on drugs. Are you listening? It was like a party to them as they were murdering and maiming innocents. Are you listening to me? You say that can't happen in America. You don't think so? I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it, folks. It's coming. It is coming to America. I saw as they turned off the lights in the auditoriums of the public schools. Parents and children joined together. I saw it as the Muslims grabbed a hold of their machetes And I didn't see that in detail. The lights were out. I thank God the lights were out. I don't want to see that. But in that dream, I was underneath the car outside the the school. And I was calling the police department. And I was telling the police department what was going on in the school. And by that time, it had moved from 
inside the school to outside the school. And I was hiding underneath a car on the phone with the police department. This really happened, folks. And God showed this to me in a dream. And the police department told me they were on their way. Listen to this preacher. They never showed up. In the dream, God revealed to me that the person that I had talked to on the phone at the police department was a Muslim. They were in on it. Are you listening, folks? It's coming. They're taking over America. Right now, they're taking over local leadership. Muslims that want to give everybody free rent. Are you listening? Many of them came in under Obama. But they're here. They're preparing. Civil war is coming to America. Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. I believe there's a great move of God coming, brothers and sisters. But remember this, a great move of God always comes in a time of trouble. Amen. The move of God that is coming is coming in the midst of war, in the midst of famine, in the midst of pestilence. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, look up. Your redemption is drawing near. In the midst of the storm. There is coming a great change to those that are ready. Not everyone's going to see his glory in the midst of the storm. Not everyone's going to see his appearing. Not everyone's going to see Jesus walking on the water. Not everyone is going to get out of the boat. Not everyone is going to be able to be taken when he takes his bride. Glory to the Lamb, brothers and sisters. It's real. I know, I know it's real. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is coming right in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. Right in the midst of the confusion. Right in the midst of the chaos right in the middle of all that's unfolding, the Lord of glory is going to be in the midst. Amen? He's still in the fire, folks. Amen? He's still in the fire. He's still walking in the flame. Amen? He'll be there when you call upon his name. He's still in the fire. He's still in the storm. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The devil is angry, brothers and sisters. The devil is so angry right now, but nothing comparing to what he's going to be when he realizes he's been cast down unto the earth. When he realizes he's been cast down to the earth, it says he's going to have great wrath. That great red dragon, that murderous Red dragon is going to behead all those that do not receive the mark of the beast. Beheadings is coming, even in America. I don't believe you, Brother Joseph. Well, then you don't believe the Bible. You don't believe the word. Hallelujah. That's right. Why do you think Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man? Have you seen his glory today, friend? Have you looked into the mirror of his glory? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's vain. To look into a physical mirror. 
It's okay to comb your hair or to look presentable, but don't go beyond that. Amen? Don't go beyond that. We have a president that loves mirrors, and he loves Saudi Arabia and their Muslims. Hello. I saw him over there in Saudi Arabia. Obama wasn't welcome to to do the marriage dance with them. They call it the marriage dance. Donald Trump's over there dancing with a sword with the Muslims doing a marriage dance, a union dance. Hello. Hello, people. We better wake up. We better wake up. Did you know the word Allah is in the scripture under curse? The curse that goes out over all the earth, Allah. That's right. That's right. Allah means God. Islam means submission. That's what's coming. All the, the, those that do not bow down to the beast are going to be beheaded. Are you listening? The beast is rising, taking over the earth. Russia giving new rights to the Muslims to beat their wives. It's not against the law to beat your wife in Russia. Islam is taking over the planet just like the Bible said it would. God says, if you will not serve me, you will serve the seed of Ishmael. Amen. That's what it comes down to. Ishmael and Isaac. But out of Isaac shall thy seed be called. Ishmael is taking over the earth. The world wants Ishmael. Illegitimate. Not based on the promise of God. Amen. And let me tell you this. Ishmael has an evil eye. Amen. Envious of his brother. Envious of his brother. You say, oh, well, there's those that are trying to bring them together right now. They're going to have peace. No. Ishmael has an evil eye. He's envious of his brother. Envious to kill him. You'll never see Ishmael and Isaac together. Are you listening, folks? That's why there was a wrestling match that went on between Jacob and Esau. They will never get along because of the evil eye. Amen? Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Do you love the Lord's appearing? Because he's coming. Amen? He will suddenly visit his temple. I want to be ready. I want to be ready when he appears. How about you? the power in the name of Jesus we've 
Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the 